Oh dear. Good <laughs> good morning everyone. How are you? I was just messing around with my phone. I said to Steve, there's no one here. I'm all on my own. And he pushed another button and there you all are. So good morning and welcome. It's, I'm going to need a fan. It's hot, isn't it? I tell you, this heat and humidity, it's only acceptable to me if I am in cotton shorts and a singlet shopping <laughs> uh, at Stanley Market in Hong Kong or if I'm in a pool with one of those, I haven't done it for years, I'm making out of, I've done it recently, in one of those um, pools you see where you swim up to the bar and you sit on the stool, humidity is perfectly fine. I don't go in pools to swim, I go in pools to stay cool uh, and drink a cocktail. Who is here this morning? Karen is here. Barb Clifford's here. Good morning. Good morning. Jenny Wren's here. Hello, Louise. Hello, Jill. Hello, Kerry. Kathy, good morning. Bernadette's in the building. Hello, hello, Dale. Welcome. Um, do we have to be good, Steve? There's people here I haven't seen before. We have to behave. Judy Vermeulen, good morning. Hello. I sent you... Oh. Thanks, Shaz. I had to chop. I had to chop it off. It was hideous. Um, Judy sent you an email this morning. I think it may have been my fault, not Steve's, to up the amount of backing for your quilt. I've sent you an email on it. Well, And I promised you a phone call yesterday. Lise, is it really as hot in Alice as it is here? Because it's stinking hot. You don't do humidity, though, in Alice. I don't think. You don't. Um, good morning, Jane and Tracy. Tracy's here. Good morning. Um. <laughs> Hi, Lisa here under my alias. Yeah, I know who you are, Jen. Um, hello, Pam. Danny. Oh. <laughs> Danny, why are you on and not Marie? Because you're going to be operating the machine? I don't know. You guys are funny. That's not a chop. Oh, yes, Judy Vermeulen. So I was going to do a Judy yesterday. You need to understand when I met Judy, she had this cool thing going on here with the, the red and the black underneath. And I was going to do a Judy yesterday. But guess what? It's not long enough. And by the time we took off all of the ends, nothing left. Good morning, Jill and Laurie. Hey, um, it's not about my hair today, girls, okay? Just settle down. And Danny, I have to remember. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not about the hair. It's about the machines. Um, I won't tell you how much the hair cost, but the top, because you know I love doing this, you can't, it's long. Can I show you the end? Look, it goes all the way to the ground. I actually have to wear heels with it. And um, I'm very proud to say this time it is the Moreban Airport DFO Salvation Army Shop for seven bucks. You know I love doing that every now and then. I buy the expensive shoes and then I go out and op shop for the clothes to go with it. But I tell you, it's a good it's a good pattern and we need to um well, you will see on Tuesday, Tuesday's show we are making M's uh, and I'm making the kimono jacket with my scarves. So this was quite an apt thing to buy at the time. And all of that, all of that we can do on these machines. Now it's not hard to confuse me. It's it's really not. But I managed to do it. Money Annie Ruth, I managed to do it to myself very, very impressively in the last 24 hours between studying Benina seven series manuals at home, then at the hairdressers, then last night, and then this morning in bed, and then for the last hour. I have not managed to find a way to clarify the differences between the machines. And I am pretty certain that's what Mr. Benina wants. He doesn't want you to be able to go, oh, so that versus... Every single machine is slightly different. So we're going to do... Some of it makes sense to me. Some of it I probably need to send a, a swift note off to carry at head office and ask. Usually not humid, but when we get the remains of WA Cyclone, it's very humid, which it is today. <gasps> so Lisa officially has frizzy hair today, which mine will be in half an hour in Alice Springs. Well, there you go. Weather report. 
Nate on the ABC News Morning Show would be proud. Oh, what did I push? Push something. Um, hang on, I'm going to push the home button. All right. So, we're going to start with these two babies. Good morning, Jenny. Um, I want to start with these because the big question is, I really did push a button, didn't I? The big question, that's it. The big question out there at the moment is, what is the difference? Oh, I mustn't lean on Michelle's quilt. What is the difference between our true, tried, favourite, all-time, go-to machine 720, which is my baby. You know I love this machine. I love all my machines, but there, I don't know. There's some attachment to this. I think there's a sentimental value for me because I had one of these when I was an, um, you know, a friend ambassador, whatever you want to call it, of Benina. And uh, I had a 750 first with a dual feed, white I loved, loved, loved. And then I switched over to the 720. So, which was the next one they gave me. And then I became a dealer and then it was part of the, part of the deal of being a dealer. So this is a fave machine. And I know all my girls that have bought one, they love it and it's just it's just it's beautiful so this has the 5.5 mil feed dogs so the sad sad thing is good morning Val who has a 720 um, the sad sad thing is you can't buy one anymore we can you can buy one we'll get to that in a minute you can't buy it anymore they have changed to the 735 so that happened towards the end of last year that does not mean that this machine is worth any less, that it's not as good as or anything like that. It absolutely is. It doesn't mean you can't get it serviced. It doesn't mean there isn't parts. When you think about the fact that Tim and others service 50-year-old bananas and they're still servicing them and fixing them and when they haven't got parts, they're able to source things. Most 95% of bananas can be serviced a long, long way back, and that will remain the same with this machine. So, if you if you love your 720, please don't walk in and look at to the sewing room and look at it any differently now that there is a new model. Um, and this is the new model. So, the first thing I want to do is just go through the differences in these two machines. I suppose to reassure those that have bought 720s, maybe recently that your machine is is beautiful and there is absolutely no reason you should love it less <laughs> oh marie it was you that's okay then and then i want to explain the difference to this one and i've got a couple of theories on why they have done this With a little bit of a manufacturing background i reckon i know so first of all this is 720 5.5 mil feed dogs this is my machine um I'm not going to mess with you. I'm, I'm, I'm not. So the reason I've got this baby up, I'm probably more likely going to show you things on the 735 this morning purely because that's the one that's available and it's got a bigger screen. That's the main difference. I've been through all this with Nathan. I've got the comparison chart here. If you are a patch worker and you don't plan on going into a lot of really decorative stitches and machine embroidery there is no difference between these machines except for the screen and of course the price the price um, which reminds me those that are in Melbourne you know the cooker restaurant closed and the Dandenongs last year and I took the boys I had my seventh tenth birthday there and I um, we decided to take the boys so they had the whole cooker restaurant experience and I said to the lady on the phone, what's changed in the last 40 years? And she said, only the price, darling. And I thought about that line several times with these two machines. Okay, so this is my 720. It has done nothing. It has done 68,000 stitches, which is appalling. That sounds like you should, it should have done millions by now. So this arrived back on my doorstep the morning at 7 a.m. It, it is has a full server sheet. From Tim, it's all working beautifully, it's gorgeous, so please keep that in mind. It is four and a half thousand dollars. It was five. So, I'll, it, and it's not much less than the actual new price because it's basically new. 
because I've been sewing on my 790 and my 475 with you and things. So I just, just so you know, because I need you to know that this is the new 735. As you can see, bigger screen. And a few a few other little bits I'll run through for you. And, and with that, then we're going to look at some of the features of the machine. I'm going to test you on what you actually you know, know. Some of the things that I'll do, we will have done before. Pam loves her 720. <laughs> um, some of the things we've been through before, we'll go through a little bit of maintenance. We'll do that again and do our thread cutter together because I've never done my thread cutter cleaning. I tell you all to do it, but I used to have Tim. So we'll, we'll push the buttons and we'll do it together. Can't be that hard, can it? I tell a lot of you to do it. Actually, I probably did it. I have done it, but not for a long time. Okay, that is the difference between the machines. Screen and a few other little bits and bobs, not a lot, but the new one is six. So that's what came in on, I've got the piece of paper here, this is the packing sheet that came in that says 5999. So I didn't get to do with everything that was going on with us this special before Christmas and I didn't have one of the machines to demo to show it. So not through Benina but through us we're doing this one for five and a half just today. Um, well just today initiated by the end of the week all done and dusted because you know I'm on the forget Lisa doesn't have a shop front um, thing but you know so five and a half but that is the main difference between them I suppose it's a big difference to some people but uh, if you've got you know pretty good eyesight and you're happy to use your stylist that's about it thanks Jackie um, so my theory is a little bit like handbag manufacture when we talk about handbag design now all the seven series machines all have this um this larger screen I'm, I'm just realizing i'm pretty much in the dark and it's because i've set up all of the lights so they're up close for demoing for you this uh all of the sevens now have this big screen Think about that in a factory situation, that's going to make life a lot easier and streamlined for Benina because now all their sevens have the same size screen because this is the same screen as the new 770 plus and the 790. So that's, that is my theory on that, is that this is going to make their life a lot easier and uh, to our benefit because it's, it's, it's nice and big. So um, I think I think that's pretty much it. Um, so we'll run through a few of the bits and bobs that are different between them and then um, we can get stuck in colour touch screen. So the new one is seven inches wide. That's bad. And the old one was 4.3, but this one was 4.3. Um, if you, yeah, that's, that's, I, I've, got, I've got this massive, sheet of stuff and I just managed to completely confuse myself with it. Oh, between these two it's got this other function of, of I haven't actually found where to see which stitches work yet but it enables you to take a stitch and automatically turn it into a triple stitch so you know how you've got a normal triple stitch in your first main menu with all your with all of your straight stitches in top top right then on your screen some of the stitches now selectively can be stitched with triple stitch. So I suppose if you were doing um, a really decorative stitch on denim or something or a heavier weight fabric, it's going to make it pop and look prettier, but I'm not sure which ones yet. That's just something I found this morning. Um, okay. It's got, it's got a few more buttonholes. It's got a couple more alphabets. It's got a few more decorative. The decorative stitches almost take it up to what the 770 was so they're kind of overlapping everything but it's got a few more quilting stitches yeah um, it's got a couple of new alphabet as I said um, you know you some of the things you don't think you want them until you actually know they exist so uh, what's a good example I've got the 790 down here as well um, if I said to you, 
um, well, don't you want to be able to sew sideways? And you go, well, I didn't until you told me I could because you can sew 360 degrees on a, on a 790. That's for another day. Um, so that is that's pretty much it. There's nothing... There's, there's nothing else between these two. So that is something I really wanted to point out because I didn't, I really didn't want you to be stressing over am I missing out on anything. They've all, you know, we've all got two spools, we all clean the same, the race hook's the same, the width is the same, everything else is the same. Um, look, obviously a big screen is absolutely fantastic to have, but even the book, even the books look the same the same all right so if you love your 720 I'm very very happy about that one um, I am and and I and I love this one the reason I'm selling mine is is come on I can't keep both but I needed to be sure that uh, when when someone with a 720 rings me and says I need help and I FaceTime them I need to be sure that this machine is very similar so that I can go through all of the steps, but it would be very negligible. Of Rob will kill me if I keep both. It's bad enough. I've got a seven ninety and a seven, and I've got two sevens, let alone three. Now, just going to very ungraciously lift this one off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, oh no, that's not going to go there. Hey, Steve. So just to give you a look as well, this is what a 790 looks like if you've never seen one. It's really weird. They are, they are exactly the same size case and everything. It just looks bigger because of the black. That's the difference between the outside. Inside, lots of difference, but that's the difference between those two babies. Um, Judy, you asked me the other day about the difference between upgrading your 770 to a 770 plus and compared to a 790. I've kind of done that maths for you. The figures, the, the actual financials are not great, mate, um, in the difference between them. But in upgrading machines, um, you get sideward motion, you get a lot more, you get sideward motion and you get the big screen. That's probably the big thing. All right, so we'll turn this baby around. Right. And I'm just wondering if we, I might not bother popping on um, the uh, the table at the moment because I want to just want to run through a few things with you and the first things I'll go through are sort of pertinent to any any of the sevens okay um, last time that we did cleaning and maintenance and things it was smack in the middle of a show uh, Anne Marie Selway, will come on down. <laughs> and, uh, it, <laughs> we, we need a, I keep saying it, we need a closed group 790 day. Um, we're not, we're not biased or anything, but um, for those that don't know, the 790 is a whopper. It's about, but it comes with, it actually comes with the machine embroidery module. It's, it's an all-in-one encompassing package like a Caribbean cruise that comes with um, oh no it's like a club med all inclusive comes with all the cocktails you just start at the top of the list and work your way down it's sort of that kind of machine comes with all entertainment food <laughs> all that's <laughs> all of it included all right Let, let's do some let's do some Let's do some basics first, shall we? Shall we do that? I can't even see one. There we go. We'll do some basics first. I really, because, you know, well, there's a lot of people out there that have just got their machine. Oh, that's not too bad. You see that screen up there? Yeah, you can. 
Alright, so let's let's just run through a few things. Um, so a lot of you have had your little machines for a while. Can you hear my air conditioner? I went and bought a USB air conditioner so it hits my feet. I'm not sure it's working very well. Alright, so you see this thread. This thread that came with your machine, fun fact, is um, a universal thread that Benina used to test all of their machines. So it is a fine thread, super fine, beautiful, and this is what they use everywhere. A little bit like McDonald's have a universal recipe for hamburgers, <laughs> there's a universal recipe for testing machines. And when you go in and um, customise your machine for different tensions, there's universal stitches that they use as a tester. Uh, now, what did I do with it? I just had that test piece on. Oh, I've put it somewhere. There was a little test piece that, oh, there it is. It's on the floor. Hang on. This one. This is the one that just came back with the 720. See that? You've got little universal test stitches that the the mechanics actually use, oh look at the bike, um, they actually use two test machines. So everything, I suppose what I'm trying to say is everything has been thought of in advance. Yes Debbie, the weightlifting workout this morning is definitely, definitely on, my goodness. All right, so I've got a piece of paper here. Do you want to see my really official notes? Look, very unofficial. Okay, let's go in here first because there was an incident this week where I threw my hands up in the air and I, I rang the hotline, Tim, because I had been in and out of my machine and re-threaded the bobbin. Yes, the dealer had chucked a fit and, uh, and I could not for the love or money find out what was wrong. I was impatient. I was naughty. I should have lowered my stool, which I've just done, and got right in there and had a really good look because this morning at 6.30 he informed me there was a thread in there and I could have easily removed it myself. So let's pop out our bobbin case. What's important to remember here, um, and I'm only going by what he tells me, is don't touch it. There, You can adjust your tension on these, but I prefer to leave that for him because he knows what he's doing. I don't, and I stick with everything up on the top with my thread tension. I don't touch this. If you are in the middle of nowhere somewhere, then you might want to have a look at some of the YouTube demos. I'm changing it, but I don't. You, you shouldn't need to, unless you've thrown it out like Judy did <laughs> the other week. But that was all right, all fixed up, all good. And remember your bobbin cases are under warranty as well, okay? Hello Diana, lovely to hear from you in Costa Rica and I emailed you back this morning. So there you go, so that's my bobbin case. Now this freaks people out because getting it back in, it's all right to pull it out, but getting it back in, ugh, I want you to remember as well, this is all described for you in your manual and on your screen. I'll show you on your screen in a minute. So you're going to flip that little lever on the side, drop this down. It's a little bit loose, but that's okay. And then you're going to pop out your bobbin race. It's a, it's a beautiful little flying saucer, isn't it? So, now mine, of course, I don't need to oil. In the back of your manual, it's going to tell you, oh, this is what I wanted to show you. The machines used to come with these, and you used to buy these as replacements. Hey, Stevie, yeah. can you grab the pussy cat? you're not on camera, and take her out, because I've decided she's about to do a major oil, oil change and tune-up with her bell on the floor. Um, so we used to get these, and... They were fabulous, I will admit, but there was an actual um, problem with them that they would leak. So quite often you'd open up your little case or whatever and you'd have oil everywhere. So they have replaced these and now you have a very basic looking little tube, but that is okay because these do not leak. So if you do reorder your oil, which has happened a few times, people have said, you've sent me the wrong one. It, this is actually the new one. It's got a little safety seal on there. 
open off. There you go. So it's still got a little nozzle. So when you go in, the instructions tell you in the manual, just going by the manual, just one uno drop in there. That's all. You can over oil your machine. You absolutely can. You have to be so careful. And then what? Because once you get too much oil in there, it gets all cluggy and then it gets all, it'll, you know, start to dry out and it gets gluggy and then all the thread bits get stuck in it. And um, I have seen inside over oiled machines. Not good. Oh, uh, when I was talking with Errol the other day, she was being very, very good and following her manual to the T for setup. And it actually did tell her, and I haven't noticed it in the new 770 pluses, um, it does tell you to do all of this before you even fire up your machine. And I was, poor Errol, I scared her. I said, don't put anything in there. But I can understand why they put it in the manual because that machine could have been sitting in a warehouse, you know, for six, 12 months. It's been on a boat, it's been everywhere and it may have dried out. So that is why it's there. The machines coming through at the moment, they are literally hitting the floor and out the door because of COVID and shipping restrictions and things. So it's not gonna be necessary. You'll find a few interesting things as well um, in the manual and in faults. If the machine is sewing slow, it's, uh, it says it's not warm enough. Remember, this is a Swiss company, sub-zero conditions, not 40 degrees and humid. So if you see little things about warming up machines and things, it's all about Northern Hemisphere or, or Tassie on a really, really cold day, I suppose. All right, in here, you're gonna oil two spots only. There are two little felt pads in here, one and two. They are the only bits you need to oil. If they are white, they have dried out and they need to be oiled. Uh, if they are yellow and they look moist and when you sort of touch them, oh goodness, I just put some on anyway. Um, then you need to, you know, if they're moist and they're yellow, it's fine. And you can actually, if I could just point it out to you, if you, if you want to have a really good look in here, you can actually see that whole felt pad is a whole circular disc that is encased inside. And you are just putting little oil on these dots and that oil is going to spread out over that whole felt disc that's in there. And have a look at this, look. Magnetic, okay? So that's what's going to hold it when we put it back in. Um, now, this is a little bit of a challenge <laughs> for me because I'm sitting uh, on an angle for you and you're going to get a big snout in the way. Um, again, I'm going to show you a little demo, but see the little white dot here? Oh, they're white now. They used to be green. Okay, uh, white dot here and I've got, a, I've got a whole hole that goes through here. They need to line up. For me, I remember 10 and 4 o'clock. It's 10, 4. So my two little felt dots are going to be at 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock when I put it back in. Ease it back in on an angle and just give it, oh, that was a little bit impressive. Hang on, that's just too good. It's, it's got to be harder than that because usually it is. So you pop it back in, sit it in the hole. There we go. I wanted it to at least look like it was a bit of a challenge. But you'll feel it when it's clicked in. You absolutely will. And if you want to really feel this magnet, just put your fingers either side and give it a little pull and it will literally click back in because of the magnetism. All right, then pop up this front one gone back in with a click and then the most important thing before you do anything oh it's just starting up for the first time is to give that a really nice turn and just check it's all working if it's not together properly it will sound off if there's something stuck in there like mine was or uh, it just won't turn it will sit locked and we can pop our bobbin back in um, sensor side down if you have anything rough on the surface of your sewing table, which would be some one of my uh, one of my ladies or someone that's using sandpaper templates, just be careful. This is like the swipe on the back of your credit card, so just protect that surface from anything rough because they are the sensors for your bobbin. And then we're going to pop that back in there. Pop it in. You've got one cutter here, you've got one up here on the side, you've got another one around the back and you've got one up on your bobbin. 
winder. Then we can shut that door. Now, just to go through that again, if we go into your little cogs up here for settings and then we go into the machine, that takes us into this whole little special world here. We want maintenance, so we're going to push the spanner. And then we get all these little signs that come up here, which are really good. So this one, hang on, I've got to think about it. Give me a minute. Oh, this one, if you've got a machine embroidery module, did you know there is a section in here to put your machine embroidery module back into the packing position without having to manually move it, which is much better for the embroidery module. Fun fact, I found out. Okay, so actually, first of all, let's go back here. Push your little bobbin down here. That just tells you how to wind your bobbin. If you, if you get stuck, sometimes we do. Sometimes we go, what am I doing wrong? It is just a really pretty little video that shows you how to pop it in properly. To me, that's, you know, jet lag with a couple of drinks at midnight. Something's gone terribly wrong in my brain and I haven't worked it out. So I'm going to take you back in. Cogs, machine, maintenance. So, there are separate sections in here. Calibrating your buttons, your button, wait a minute, your buttonhole foot is in here. If we need to do that with you on the phone or in person. In here this is the oil bit that we have just done. That's all about pulling out exactly what we've just done. One bit into the race and it says one in big red into those two little holes. All right so everything I've just said is there on the machine in cogs um, machine and spanner. All right so that you can have a little look yourself and then about popping it in there. Okay so that's there. Um, makes me completely surplus. Now this is the one that we want to do together. All right. This is cleaning your cutter and this is the same for, whoops, for all of the machines. Oh. Right. I haven't done this forever because I just, I'm lazy. I get tend to do it. Remove your pressure foot. Done. And the needle. So pull that out. And the stitch plate. Then touch the button. Automatic thread cutter on the head frame here. So we're going to push this button down here. Yep. And the thread cutter is moved to the right. Oh, I pushed the wrong button. So now what I can do, I can actually go in. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, now it's actually across to the right. So I can actually get, oh yeah, I, I can't really show you, but you can get in here and give it a really good clean because it does get, oh, it's just the tiniest of little blades. Done. Okay, so, and then, Take it back to the start, raise my foot, okay, and then we'll pick it back up with our thread cutter here, with our scissors again, and we're back to normal. So I can go and put everything in. It's down in here, but I want you to clean that before you call a technician and say, my thread cutter doesn't work, because a lot of the time it is just that you've got a little bit of lint on your blade. I'll put that back in there. It's, you know, it's a little bit, isn't it, about just routine, maintenance, and the amount of times we would save ourselves if we just remembered to change our needle regularly. A lot of the phone calls that I get are with um, uh, threads gathering up underneath machines, winding around bobbins and things, the first thing I'm always going to say to people is, when did you change your needle last? And sometimes a new needle can have a burr. So it, it does happen. You know, you can get, pop a new one in and they'll have a little burr on them. So you think you've done the right thing and, and put a new needle in, but it might actually be the needle. 
if you've hit a needle on a pin also you can end up with a burr on it so that's just just worth just worth watching okay now one other thing I was reading about that applies to all machines is what happens with your knee lift so a lot of you don't like knee lifts and extensive research suggests it's because you had a different machine Emma Bowman is the best our Emma is the best example of that because she is an ex uh, I'm gonna say she's an ex genomic girl so she's not keen on her knee lift she wasn't keen on the knee lift because on the genome it didn't sit right for her for her leg and um, uh, with my genome I got a I got a I upset my hip over a few years too because I loved using my knee lift so I really really want you to try it if you haven't tried it already I think I can remove the machine back a little bit so you can see it is in just <laughs> hang on I'm just gonna lower the camera a little bit there we go so you can see so a lot of people leave their knee lift in the box because they sort of figure, look, now I've got this flash machine, why on earth would I bother with the knee lift when I've got a hover foot, which we'll get to in a minute, when I've got needle up, needle down button, sorry, foot up, foot down buttons here, down, up. Why do I need this here? The difference is when you use your knee lift, you actually drop the feed dogs and it also releases the tension on your machine. So that is that is something that... <laughs> Look at you! I love my knee lift! I love my knee lift! Okay, I'm, I'm glad. Um, that, is, that is a really, really important thing because when you're sewing and you've got um, thick fabric in or you're doing your binding and you're going around corners or you need to move your oh, look, there's just so many reasons to reduce to, to drop your feed dogs and lose your tension so if you watch now when I oh sorry first of all this function here is going to be up or it's going to be down but when you use your knee lift I'm just putting my hand here so you can see where it is see that the feed dogs are now down so I can easily maneuver and I can it's gradual so as I hit it with my knee it gradually comes up and down but if you can hear that or not when when you um, when you try it out later just listen to the machine because you will hear it you'll hear the tension engage and disengage as you use it so particularly when you're working over thick fabrics when you're using your spacer it's really important as well uh, which I didn't bring in with me. So your little um, three-prong spacer. I might grab Steve to grab it. Hey, Stevie, on my desk or over where my machine was, there's those little plastic tab things. I don't know how to describe it because you've never used one. I can show you one in the book if you want. So, you know, if you're actually using your spacer to go over pin tucks and things, the knee lift is going to be your best option because you can just lift it up a little bit to go over bumps, stick the spacer in behind. Do you know what I'm talking about, Stevie? He's gone looking for it. So please, please do try out your knee lift. And in terms of it being ergonomic and working for you, what you actually need to do is take the time to find the right size stool or chair and height of your machine. Everything, everything <laughs> no, no, on my table with the red box. My, you know my magic red case with all the feet in it? That's just gone this morning because I've been pulling stuff out. So I want you to, yeah, please, please have a go. Hang on a minute, I want to get the spacer. Oh.
did I swear and you heard me from the other room? I'm so sorry. I, we will keep looking. We'll find them. There's two. Oh, found it. Yeah. They're sitting under the lens cloth to tell everyone how to clean their screens. They look like this. Just educating the men. They look like that. They look like the little plastic things that go in your you shirt. Want, in your shirt. In your collars. collars. Forever to be known as the collar spacer. Alright. So, you've seen... Have you worked out what this is for in your kit yet that came with your machine that is to go underneath so when you're going up over a really big hem the cat's locked in somewhere see that so you're actually lifting up your fabric and it's now the foot at the right, sorry, you're lifting up your foot, it's now at the right height to run over your fabric. So this is when this knee lift is really handy because now both my hands are free and I can maneuver it over. That to me is still better than actually using the needle up, needle down because I feel like I'm in control and I can gently lower my foot down onto the fabric. So lift it again. I'll put that down there and then I can lift it up with my knee and I can put it under at one thickness or two like that and drop it. Really, really important I think when you're doing a lot of work with um, denim and things. Um, Lynette, it was a very average event scheduled for today. It didn't come with pretty pictures or anything because Cass had a migraine, so I had to work out how to do it myself. So incompetent. This <laughs> is what was hiding my spacer. And this is here to remind you to clean your screens, but treat it as well as you would your computer screen because it is a computer or your glasses. So when your screen is off, just give it a really, really nice wipe over with a lens cloth. Also, you know, even my sweaty little hands this morning, which have probably got a little bit of makeup residual on them, to be honest, this is the best thing to clean down. Look at that. Beautiful metal surface here to protect it. And I know I've said it to you before, when you get your machine, I've already taken mine off, Please take off your protect protective covers. I know it is so tempting to leave them on um, so that they look lovely. You know, you think, oh, I'm just going to protect them as long as I can. You know, do you remember um, our friend, the nanny, and her mum had her couch covered in plastic to protect, to protect the couch fabric? They've got to come off. One, because you're with your... Um, with your sew-on table, it won't fit properly onto your platform if you've still got that cover on and then you're going to force it and you can snap or crack your platform. Also, the one that's on your screen, when you start up your machine, it's actually really hard to see that there is a cover on there and you're going to look at it and go, my screen's broken, it's all pixelated, it just looks like that because it's still got the cover on. So take that off. It's not like a protector on a phone. It's purely to get it to you and then it needs to come off because also if you don't, your stylus will not necessarily work that well on the screen. The stylus with the new 735 is the same as, um, is the same as all the others. Um, and the other thing is too, if you lose your stylus and you need a new one, make sure you order the 7 because the one that's for the 5 series is different. It's got a little squishy foam head and I don't know why, but one works on one and works one works on the other. So for me, if I can't find my stylist, with the sevens, I have to use the end of my nail and with the five, I gently, and I have to use the pad of my finger with the five. All right, um, so knee lift, really important. Oh, when it comes to knee lifts and foot pressure and things as well, just do also remember that you can change your foot pressure and that comes in really important 
when you uh, are doing really thick or thin fabrics. So I'm not sure that we really touched on that last time, but I came across this when I was looking to do some um, organza yesterday briefly had a look and I went wow I have to remember to tell the girls about that I don't think Pete and Max are watching this morning so I think I can say girls and John's not here okay so if you come down the move around a bit if you come down on any of your machines if you come down the left hand side you've got at the top your thread tension you can change, add a whim, button. Oh, and do remember that little yellow bit. I was talking about this with Corrie the other day. Yellow means you're not at your default setting. Yellow means um, you've changed it from what the machine is set at default setting when you turn it on. So at any stage, if you're wondering if you where the machine thinks you should be, if it's yellow, no, you've changed it. So. If I go up to and just push clear, it will take it back to default. But always yellow will show you something other than what's in the machine. So you can change here, go up and down, and then I can clear it. Close that off. Next one. This is your, now this is, oh, uh, is this new? No, needles. This is where you, this is new. This is new to the 720. It's in the 720, but it's not on the main screen, I'm pretty sure. They've got room to put it here. This is all about telling the machine which needle you've got on. And if they've also included on here which foot plate you've got on. Remember to tell your machine if you are running twin needle, which I want to do uh, next week. As you know, I spoke all about last week about um, getting back into the saddle and doing lots and lots of Facebook stuff next week. Twin. Twin, twin, twin. So if you haven't got a twin needle, please get one by next week. <laughs> um, so this, if you tell it you've got a twin needle and you tell it you've got your straight stitch plate on, it will not let you sew because you know, it knows that it's not going to work. So there's lots of little safety features around telling the machine what you've needle you've got in as well. All the felting needles, triple and everything are in here also. I need to turn that a bit more for you. Just so you can see that a bit better. There we go. Okay. So we'll close that one down. And then feet. Which are the best feet to use? You, you guys know all this. Gold stars for all the ones that are the best. I want to come here. Foot pressure here. So... If you are doing really, really thick fabric, you might want to lower your foot pressure because the, the depth that that shaft is going to come down onto your fabric, it doesn't need to come down as far. So in, in lessening off the foot pressure, you're going to make it a little bit easier for the machine to maintain a really nice tension if you just ease that off. And as always, you're going to need to have just that little bit of scrap fabric to play with first so I was going to run a few thicknesses of denim or even some canvas through here um, I would I would uh, ease it off I would you know there's going to be a few little play around things for you with thicknesses if you are making bags I'll come back to that in a tick um, if you're going to do thin fabrics then you want to put your foot pressure up because the other way it's thinner so you want the pressure to come down harder to hold it in place so when you're doing super fine stuff or you want to sew on just one thickness of fabric or a lace or something like that then I would actually put your foot pressure up again it's showing yellow so we'll clear that off it's back to default setting and I can shut down that window so um, let's do double next week and the reason I want to do twin needle uh, next week is because I want to start doing some bias work for myself to sew on to redo my Christmas Celtic medallion and a few other things. So we might as well do that demo next week uh, and I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to take that out for a tip. Um, a couple of people have asked me to go back over hover and also about stitch securing, securing your stitches 
and with that we might actually um, switch on to the 790 to do that bit so we can talk about the wider feed dogs and dual feed and things as well so all right let's do let's do our hopper when we when when I had uh, the shop and if you're wondering at the moment is she a dealer or is she not I am but it says in the rule book I'm supposed to have a bricks and mortar store so at the moment I am but I can't have you come in to show you the machines. Instead, we do demos via FaceTime, and then when you get your machine, we can FaceTime and we can talk anytime, which to date has been proving really, really good fun. So it gives you access to me a lot more than uh, when we were in the shop for me at the moment. So that works um, really nicely. This one's still got its polystyrene underneath okay so your hover foot is one of the main reasons you bought a 7 or a 570 it would have to be one of the reasons because it just makes life such a joy to sew with so to get to your hover foot, um, you're going to go into settings, which might be across here on your 720, or it's going to be up here now on these bigger screens. So you're going to come in here and you look at this screen and you go, where am I going with this? There's so much going on. We actually want to come in here. This is all about machine embroidery. This is about you customising the machine. As I said, have a code for your family. If you have a red screen, they know not to come near you for the day. It is a sewing day and to go away. You can perhaps change that over to pink, which means do not come near me. I'm in my happy place, nick off. And there are lots of different colours. I'm a teal girl most of the time. And I do, I must say, oh, what? Look at Okay, this is new. The Cheeky Devils have actually given you the option of having the word Benina in the back screen on your machine, for heaven's sake. I'm going with the Oriental wallpaper personally, sorry. Just got sidetracked changing my screen. You can't see that as well, can you? No, you cannot. Let's go red. Let's see if you can see the red. No. One more go. Let's do one more go. Mm, I'll probably well, we'll go back to the blue, but I'm definitely going the oriental. Okay. All right, blue. So that's it. This here, this is sensors, and you're got, for your upper thread and your lower thread, and you can say why, why would I want to turn them off? If you are doing felting or cut work on your machine, now you. Cut work, punch work. Punch work, punch work's not an option on the 735, but it is on the 770 plus and the 790. All I'm gonna say is toys, girls, toys, toys, big toys. So, if you are doing punch work or felt work, you're not working with thread, therefore you need to be able to turn your upper thread sensor off. Also, if you are using wonderful, weird and wonderful threads and they've got a fair bit of fluff in them and they're uneven, then also you might want to turn it off because um, it can confuse the machine if it doesn't have an even thickness to it. Same with the bobbin. You'll need to turn it off if you're doing um, wacky felting stuff and everything. So that's what that that's what that one's for. Sound, you can turn your sound on and off as well. You can turn it up, you can turn it down. If the beeping's gonna drive you nuts, I turn mine off for a BSR because I always go too fast. All right, we are going to go on. There's our maintenance where we were before. Sewing, everything to do with sewing. Master tension, master speed. <clears throat> Securing stitch, I know we've run through these before. Securing stitch at the start, straight on or off. If you have it on, it will do a lovely little securing stitch at the start for you. Then over here, everything to do while I'm sewing. So if you, you want to get it in your head, this little diagram here is supposed to look like your hand sewing along with stitches next to the feed dogs. So in here, 
a whole heap of wonderful things. Uh, and this is where we start to see a difference between the 735 and the 770s and the 790. So, but all of them do have hover stitch. So this machine is spanking new, so it hasn't been set yet. And you have an option every time that you stop with your needle down, so you've got it set on your screen, stop with your needle down. You can have Huey, Jerry or Louie. You can have all the way down, so it will stop with the foot down every single time. You can have it stop over here with the foot all the way up. That's to the full height that, it, that the machine comes with of the needle shaft going up. Or you can hover. And hover means that when the needle's down, the foot will come up just a bit. I'll do it for you in a tick. So I'll do it on the, actually we'll do it when we set up the 790. So it will come up just a little bit. Now it'll come up about two mil, but you might want to change that. So if we go back through our little trail up here and we come to this one, which was on the top left, at the moment the default setting is to come up two mil. So I can change it. So if I'm working on a really deep pile or if I've got a lot of chunky applique, trapunto, um, thicker threads, pin tucks, anything like that, I can actually get it to come all the way up to 3.6 which I'm guessing is going to be exactly the same or one mil less than what the full height of the foot coming up is. So if you find it's not enough for what you're doing and I, I'm Sometimes I struggle to think of a really good example, but if you, if you were, oh, okay. The default setting is absolutely fine if you are using blanket stitch and applique, cotton fabric onto cotton. But if you're doing wool and you're turning corners and going over a really nice thick wool felt, you're going to want to up the height a little bit more for the hover foot so that it's, it's high enough to get over thicker fabric you could be appliquing padded things you could be doing um, quilt as you go with your walking foot on that would also require you to have a higher hover foot setting so that's there's a couple of those in there for you now let's um let's get ready to swap over machines so I'm going to clear this out so it's back to default no, I'm going to do it this way. Okay, buddy, we can do this. There we go. So I'm going to leave mine on hover foot, close that down, back to my main menu. With this machine, you've got a couple of things going on. You've got a thread cutter here, and also you have a pedal, and your pedal has at the bottom of it, this is obviously not the new pedal that came with the machine because it's grotty, it's had my feet on it. Needle up, needle down on your foot. So, um, oh, there's another one plugged into the machine. Hey, they're different looking feet. Oh, I know why. See this foot? <laughs> this foot has a slightly different plug. It fits, but it just looks different. That's because it's off my new overlock. Is a fun fact or is this one off the overlocker look at that they're slightly different they do exactly the same thing but they are the same if it plugs in and it's got banana on it it's good to go that's the overlocker this is me all right so go plug it in again this really to get get the hang of this you really do need to Watch the height of your machine and your stool and everything so that you're not, don't start to hurt your Achilles or your, your heel at the back. Um, but this is needle down with a hover. <laughs> needle up. So it's not going to bring the foot back up, but it will bring the needle up. So if I go again. And remember, I've got it set every time I stop for it to hover a little bit and then needle up. Then to bring this up, I will do that on the 735, okay? When you go into settings, everything to do with sewing, when we talk about 
not, you've got a choice. You can have a little star or you can have a little row of as many as you want little stitches. And when you go into cutting, you can choose to have it with or without that stitch first, a securing stitch first. So you can choose to have a little securing star or again do the little run of stitches. Great when you're doing stretch fabrics, okay? But this machine doesn't have the option to uh, do any more than that with the foot. It's only up for needle up, needle down. And that is one of the main differences. When we switch across onto a 770 plus and a 770 and a 570 and a 590 and a 790. So pretty much when we head up to the nine mil machines, you can do you can do a little bit more with your feet. I was talking to uh, Cory the other day up at Elmore with her new machine, and I said sometimes you just you just got to be a little bit careful because we get so fast at all of this multi-function stuff with a knee lift, with foot up, foot down, all that sort of stuff, and you can get yourself really confused. So we might put this baby on the floor. Yeah. And then we'll bring up. Oh, Judy, if you're still here, Nathan said get this one, but ignore him. He's a he's a state sales manager. <laughs> um he said oh. What a choice! Um, if you've got a 770 and you would, know, I'm sure you would know that there is an upgrade available at the moment to upgrade it to the same features as the new 770 Plus. Yes, except you won't end up with a bigger screen. So a lot of people are tossing up at the moment. At, at that high end of what they want to do. Um, if you if you wanted to upgrade and you've got a machine embroidery module already, then you might just want to look from a 720 to a 770 if you want to go to dual feed, if you've already got the embroidery module because to go to the 790 it comes with one. So you'd be, yeah, if you've got a 770 or any machine with a machine embroidery module, then you'd want to sell it as a whole package or otherwise you'd do the 770 plus on its own because the 7 series machine embroidery module is compatible with all the machines the walking feet are exactly the same for all the machines BSR comes with a 770 plus and a 790 but the BSR is compatible with all the machines so if, even if you have a BSR from a 440 or a smaller machine that you've bought. It goes on all of them. It just comes with, this thing comes with everything. Oh, so Melissa, it is a great upgrade. Yeah, I believe it is a really, really good upgrade. I'm glad you, so you've got yours. Okay, that's good. What have I done with you? Put that there. All right, so then let's have a look. Let's have a look at this baby. And this is, you know, this is really going through what on earth. No, I'm just, I'm switching manuals, girls, because you know, you know, it's really serious when Lisa gets the manual out. Because, okay. So, on this big baby, this is where things change up because if you have one of these machines, you have the wider feed dogs. Cleaning it, where have I been? What have I been doing? I've been playing. All of the, all of the cleaning and the maintenance um, and the race, I'll just lower it down a little bit for you. No, not that one, this one. There we go. Everything's the same. It's still the same. This is where things change. Now you're on these extra wide feed dogs. So you're out to nine mil wide. So just to give you an idea of the difference in the size of the feet. 37, okay. 
this is <laughs> just to give you an idea of what's going on here. This is a quarter inch foot for a 735 and a 720 and a 5.5 mil wide machine, like the one we just looked at. This is where you're going on a dual feed. So this is a 97D. What happens along the way with a 9mm machine is that because the feed dogs are wider, you need help or assistance a lot of the time to be able to pull your fabric through evenly purely because they're wider apart, it's harder to stay in a straight line. Uh, that's perfectly fine. On the back here, see the lever that comes down, that's our dual feed. So if you've got a dual feed, you know what, I constantly forget to engage my dual feed, you've got to remember to do it. So anytime you start sewing and you go, why is this not working as well as it should? Then all you need to do is remember to put your dual feed on. Louise says, oh uh, yeah, if you, you know, that's the 710 is a beautiful machine, Louisa. It really is. Um, and it's, it is really hard, isn't it? Because sometimes you get that first lesson and then you go home and, and things, life gets in the way. The COVID certainly got in the way um, and just life gets in the way. Your 710 is a magnificent machine. Don't let anyone tell you any different. Love a 710. The um, Louisa, please go back and have a look. Do me a favour, go back and have a look at our Australian textile exhibition little videos and photos from September last year, Eileen Campbell's work, just so you know, all sewn on a 710. <laughs> so please go back and have a look because then you will know what what your machine is capable of. Um, Eileen Campbell, she's, seven, she's a 710. Maria Waters, 750, I think been going for ages millions of millions of stitches the pros pretty much all have the original sevens because they bought straight in when they came out so please don't please please go back and have a look of, at what's there if you ever had any doubt your machine's capable of everything um, so with this machine it comes with sorry with the the nine mils whichever nine mil you have they come with the 1C on them, and this operates without the dual feed. So, not, you know, most of the time, you don't need the dual. Straight cotton sewing, you're all fine. When you start messing around, doing decorative stitches, you know, velvets, um, maybe just a thin pellet and you're doing some stitchery and things, not to the full quilting stage, then you'll pop on your 1D. So they look very, very similar at the top. Right, hang on, I'm going to hold them right for you, like that. They look really similar at the top, but when you flip them, you will see the difference. So the D has this slot cut out in here, and that's so that you're engaging these feed dogs in the middle at the back. So when you put your D on, or any of your Ds on, you're going to bring that down, and that's going to engage pick up the back of the foot and then when you've got the back of that foot engaged it's going to help move the fabric through beautifully with it on okay all right so I'm going to take that off for a minute I want to show you another one um, this is your four that you're going to use on your 720 and your 735 and any of the 5.5s this is your 4d for your nine mil machines these come with all of them so when i put that on bring bring down and engage my jewel clicked in buddy yeah okay then when i actually come through to my machine i do need to tell my machine uh which foot i've got on what have i done so i need to go through here and i need to say i've put my 4d on can you see that red line? Can you see that? There's a red line through there. That is because the machine now knows I've got my dual feed foot on and it's a zipper foot and my needle is right in the middle. So it will not let me sew because it knows I'm going to hit my foot. So that's just one very cool thing. It will let me, how far in? 
No, I can't go with position one. I've got to go two, three, four, or five out each side so that my needle doesn't hit my foot. So it's very important to let your machine know which foot you've got on, okay? So that you get the maximum sewing ability out of your machine. Um, I had a really good think about what to show you in terms of demos and stuff and uh, I am going to um, pop back in tomorrow afternoon and do a demo with zips for you because there's there's you know there's so much to go through that I want to do I actually want to do them and actually sew them together Today I, just, I want to get through and just show you different things with the machine and then come and do the zip thing. You don't have to watch it when it's live. I'll stick it up on YouTube and stuff as well under Benina. This is the one that comes with these machines as well. That's your 20C and that is for your decorative stitches. I'm going to put that on. Um, now I'll tell it I've got my 20C on. One thing about these bigger screens that is an advantage is that you don't have to do this much scrolling up and down with your stylist. With these screens, you literally flick through the pages, which uh, I find is quite nice to use. So I've now got my 20C on, so when I close that down, this machine now is happy for me to use my needle position anywhere I like. And as I step through any of the stitches, and this is the same for all of the sevens, any of my stitches, it's going to change my upper thread tension for me. So it's optimal, it's all fine. Just one other little test for you. If I come in here and I tell the machine that I have put on my straight stitch plate, uh, it now won't let me go wider than 1.6 because that's as wide as I can go so okay so there's lots of different little things that you I want you to have a play around and use the features it's just going to make your life so much easier you can see now up here as well I'm on this stitch and I've been messing with the length so it's showing yellow so again it's not the default setting and if I push clear it will take it back to the default setting in white. Um, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to change over and put on my 20D and again whichever stitch I've got chosen at the time if I go into feet all of them that are the perfect feet to use or the best feet they'll come up with a little gold star. Put this one on. I can't tell you how hard it is to do on an angle. It's weird. Okay, so that's in now. It knows it's on and that it is engaged. And now it's running with dual feed. One of the reasons it's good to tell it which foot as well, that depending on what you're doing, if it if it goes, okay, we're sewing dual feed. In extreme cases, it will change the foot pressure for you. It will change the tension for you based on which foot it knows you're running with. So it's it's just a nice little habit to get into to actually show the, show the machine what you're doing. Um, one thing I started having a play with, and I challenge you wholeheartedly to do it, is have a look at decorative stitches and how to create your own patterns and things. This to me is really important because if you are deciding, if you are weighing up your machine against other machines, this is the way to, to see how happy you are. Because then if you say, I'd really like to be able to mirror image that, I'd really like to be able to change that, or it's too hard to operate on this screen, there's lots of reasons to just go in and have a play. Also, it's going to reassure you, you have a fabulous machine because if you are here because you have a seven machine, I want you to be sure you absolutely love your seven. Where am I looking for the scary page? There's a scary page. Where's the scary page? Where's the scary page? Scary page. Okay. So 
So <clears throat> I am going into the part of the manual that you don't usually go into. And neither did I. I know there are pages in here that you just skip over and go, oh, I'm not going in there. I'm not going in there. All right. But you, you need to. You really you need to just see what your machine can do. Changing stitch width. We know how to do that. Okay. Right. Sometimes when you are playing with decorative stitches, scary, very scary, it doesn't look quite right. And in particular, and you'll know what I mean, if you do any of these weird and wonderful satin stitches, sometimes it's like, yeah, I'm not too sure that it's filling out properly. And that's usually to do with the fabric that you're using it on, Judy Vermeulen, not mentioning anyone. If you're messing with leather, cork, denim, something really different, and it doesn't stitch out as nicely as you should want, as you want. Here's the thing, you can actually go in and rebalance the stitch. Oh, I don't know this. Actually, look at that. On this screen, it's actually on a piece of denim. Oh, well, isn't that amazing? What a coincidence. All right, so. Oh, oh, oh. You can mess with it if it's not stitching straight. Check this out. So you can make it denser, so the stitches are denser. So it fills in. So when I look at that, it's not quite filled in at that particular size, so I can go through and I can change it. So that is something worth remembering. You can change the density. Who would have known of it? Now, the other thing with the, five, the 590, um, you can change the direction of the stitch was the other thing that I'm going to do tomorrow morning. In the demo, I'm going to change directions because I haven't done it. It is literally like buying one of those cars that does the parallel parking on its own. I own one, never done it. Okay, so what? See this? Look, it's changing. It's going to go sideways. Oh, no way. Jose. Okay. So I'm going to play with that in the morning. As I said, you don't have to watch. You can. I'm just going to put it on and have a play. Um, the other thing that you can do is you come in and you can actually set your, um, program your machine for how many times you want the pattern to repeat. So if you also haven't had a play in here before, please go in and do. You can push that button. And you can tell it how many times you want it to repeat. That's pretty cool. You can, so I wanted that pattern to repeat four times. It would do it. It wouldn't really make much sense, would it? If I was just doing a decorative stitch like this, I can just sew. But if I had put in hello, it would go hello, 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 hello. If I put in letters. I have no idea how to clear that now. Hang on. I'll just go back to here. There we go. Oh, thank goodness I got out of there. Isn't that embarrassing? Long stitch, mirror image. Yep, like this one. Um, these are all little icons that every now and then, I know you lot, you will have pushed the wrong button and you oh, oh, and you would have seen it at a fleeting glance. Why doesn't it like those ones? Okay, oh, because, sorry, see number five here. This is a 590, right? If I go back to here, on this, I think you should just be able to see it on your screen, you're on a big screen. There is a little cross with arrows. Do you know what that means? That means these are the sideward stitches. So I can't sew these at the moment because I do not have my 34D on. If I tell it my 34D's on, I wonder if it'll believe me. No, it won't believe me because I don't actually have it on. It hasn't picked up the sensor. <laughs> it was worth a try. Okay, let's choose a different one. Let's go. No, yeah, this one will be fine. There. Okay, so now I've pulled out this really, really pretty feather, feather work one. If I go into information here, I can flip it. Uh, no, not that way. Sorry, this way. I can flip it the other way. So it goes both ways. Now this is lovely because if you 
I'm so not graceful at doing this, am I? Not graceful at all. What can we find down? No, they're all sideward stitches too. Let's go in here. Is this where the heart is? Yes. Hi. Hi, Steve. Where are all the empty plastic boxes or tubs? There's some under that table there. Have you got all the ones under that table? Ah, uh, like the bigger ones. Yeah. Is there some under there? If not on top of the shelves in the storage, in the warehouse. So if they go that way and then we flip it. And then the, they go the other way. So what you would use that for, I would have a ribbon down the middle and I'd have my hearts running that way and my hearts running that way. That is on all your machines. So find that please. Have a go. Now over here, this enables me to not flip that way. It enables me to go this way and that is available for some stitches. That requires more research from me. Also on your machines, you've got this little zigzaggy command down the bottom and information that allows you to back step up to 200 stitches. So if you get halfway through and for whatever reason you've had a broken thread or something like that, you can use this button when you've stitched to step by step go back through the decorative stitches and pick up where your thread has broken and you'll be able to use that screen as um, also as a guide for doing that. All right, so that's another thing that you need to think about. Um, <laughs> Judy's going, oh my god, I know, I know. So please remember that. And then in terms of alphabet, if you really want to get stuck in to this stuff, then please do because you mustn't, you, you mustn't let it slide. You've bought this machine. Hang on, I gotta get out. I gotta get out. Thank you. You've bought this machine, you need to use it. So, with, with your alphabet, to actually create a word, you need to push this little button down here, which is going to set the machine so that it does a combination for you. So it's called a combination button. So I'm going to go hell low. And I'll need to step through my screen and pick up my O and I'll go back. So that is my hello done, ready to sew out straight up like that. That's all I need to do. Then if I wish to repeat it, I will come into info and no I don't, yes I do. I can come in here, no, oh I'm lying to you, hang on, no sorry, in here as well. If I hit that button, I can edit what I have done on each one. So I can say, yeah, no, I don't want that H there anymore. Uh, I don't want that E there anymore. I don't want that L there anymore, that one or that one. So I can come through and individually um, cancel out what I've put in. Now, as well as doing letters this way and alphabets, Please also remember there's extra stuff down the end, so just keep going. There's exclamation marks, there's brackets, there's all sorts of different things that you can use. So just remember to keep scrolling through to find everything that's in there. But again, you will not get a word written out unless you push your combination button. You've got to do that to make it work. And that has been that has been my error many times. I've forgotten to do that. So back in alphabet, you can see this one's got truckloads in it. Um, no, see, won't let me do it. Sideways motion. Okay, let's do this one again. So if I go flick, because I know she's not working. There you go. So we put Felicity in. Then I can come in here and I can push this button and I can actually change the grade on it, the actual gradient on this machine, larger or smaller. And I come back in here, I can mirror image it, so it goes back the other way. Um, there's lots of different things. I can rebalance it in here as well if I'm not happy with how it's stitching out. So what I'm trying to say is please go in and have a look. There are lots of different things that you can do to it. And also, of course, of course you can um, you can save it. So I can come in to save, I can pop it in here and it is saved in here. Yep, I'm going to save that. 
and then I can use it again and again and it's actually saved in there for me to use. I can step through the letters and I can edit them as well in terms of their size, their shape and you're not just going to be able to save um, letters as well, you can come through and you can save a sequence of flowers. So what you might actually want to do <clears throat> is stitch out a flower and then someone's name and then another flower at the end. So you can mix up your memory of how you stitch things out. So there's heaps of different things in there you can use. I think, I actually think, I know I've probably let you down a bit today because I said I was going to do samples, but it is about 35 degrees in here. And I think, I can see a lot of you, I've gone on to the 719 and gone, she's lost me, I'm moving on. What I think I might do is show you this flip combination and then I'm going to set up some samples. I'm going to come back early tomorrow morning when it's a bit cooler and before it gets hot in here and run through, a f have some demo bits ready. And as I said, when you get up in the morning, if you've got a chance, you can tune in and um, have a look and uh, we'll pop it up on YouTube as well. But I'll also, I'll pin it to the top of the Facebook page when I'm finished tomorrow morning so that when you hop on, it'll be, it'll actually be at the top for you. What I wanted to talk, talk to you about though, with this machine and the 770 Plus and the 770 compared to the 735 is um, what you can program in for your, for your foot because uh, we were having fun doing this the other day. All right, so if you come into settings and everything to do with sewing, everything to do while you're sewing is here, but we're going to come down here. So this little one does not exist on the 735. So as we know, it's programmed to, I'm gonna lift it up off the floor. It's programmed on the other, on the 735 and the 720, that your foot does needle up, needle down, as by what it says here. Oh, it doesn't, okay, sorry. It won't actually let me do it. I'm gonna clear all this screen out. Are you happy? Can we just go up like that? I managed to. We all done now. Tick. Thank you. All right. This probably won't matter. So we're going to go needle down. Oh, we just hadn't started up. I didn't push hard enough. And needle up. So that's all fine. That's all there. Ta. Oh, you know what it's doing? Can I tell you my mistake? I've still got. Uh, the add-on button, the combo button on. So every time I try to go back to straight stitch, that's a fun little faux pas, worth knowing, isn't it? I was still adding straight stitch to, to my pattern with the word flick in it. I still had that button on. Right, down, up. Okay. One. Down here. So, at the moment, just needle up, needle down. Let's push that. Aha! Now we have lots of other things that we can do. So we can have a combination or we can change it. Instead of doing up, needle down, needle up, needle down, I can actually instead have it do a knot with a finishing stitch. So a little finishing stitch knot. And if I want to, I can also set it to cut when the foot goes up. Oh, 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 wow, so this combination now, I can have anything, needle up, ne needle down, or I can switch it, that it will do a securing stitch, and I can also set it to cut after the securing stitch, and I can also tell it to put the foot up or not after the securing stitch. So we should do that, we should definitely do that. So I'm going to bring, I'll just bring this up a little bit so that um, I really don't think I'm allowed to buy any more cameras. I think four's plenty. So um, let's not even go there. 
let's, uh, let's, let's not. Let's not. Now, are you all, you're all savvy, aren't you, with um, threading your machines and winding your bobbins, all that stuff. You're all good with that? Your machines, your sevens have, I think it's six or seven individual motors. Six or seven individual motors so nothing's dependent on anything else so you can easily flip up your um, vertical spool which I want you to use for metallic threads please vertical is much better for them to spin off um, and wind your bobbin from here you don't have to unthread your machine what color have we got in here we have nothing in here oh we have absolutely nothing in here The one thing about not having a showroom for machines is that it makes it all terribly real that all of my machines in between spending time with you are in use. Hence machines can sort of arrive here for display and um, their bobbin case isn't in them because I've been sewing and swapping threads in my sewing room. So it's a bit different. They they don't they don't collect dust here. They get used. I did I don't know what I'm gonna do because I did I missed I absolutely missed having my um I've gone there 20. I missed having my 720. Now now I'm gonna part with it. Which is a bit it's a bit sad. But again, how, how could I possibly justify keeping both? No, no. Oh, sorry, Deb. Um, if you thread, <laughs> what do you mean you can do both? If you uh, thread a bobbin while, while it's still um, threaded up, you don't bother going around that. You don't have to go around um, that top one on the machine this one up here you don't have to go through that uh, it tells you to in the instructions but you can get away with not so no they you don't oh, I, I look you know what I rarely go through that one up the back first I go straight down to the little um, knob that you pop it around but instructions dictate I should show you to go the other way but you don't have to so if I um, so I went through there, but you can just go around here. You could be, no Deb, you can run through two, two through here. I'd be worth the go, because we're gonna run two through when we do twin threads. So I'll try it for you. I'll let you know. But I'm a bit slack. I usually just go straight around this one. I don't go through here. Did for years and then read the instruction book. Never had a problem. Nathan will kill me for saying that. What have I got? got something I need to clean mine. Okay. There we go. We'll cut this over. Oh, honestly, it's sitting on an angle. All right. So we've got all those. We've got all those set ready to go in here, but there, we went here. We've got them all on. Do we really want to do them all to start with? Let's not. Let's just do it. Let's just do one. working with these machines as well there's going to be a lot of times when you go to sew and the machine won't let you and that's because you've still got your uh, control screen or your command screen open it's all part of the safety mechanism they want this shut down so you're on your home page before you start 
you'll also know that's what's going on because your stop start button will be red. So remember we went through this before that that allows you to sew without using your foot and when you do you know start with knock your variable speed down maybe go in and change your master speed as well but your stop start button is going to be red it won't let you sew if this is still open so when we close that down we're now green and it's happy for it she or he is uh, happy for you to sew i just went and checked my feed dogs were not up because of what down because of what i was doing but if they had been they would have been showing yellow here anyway and it would have warned me when i turned the machine on if I'd le left them down when I finished. So we're just chugging along. So at the moment, the machine is set and I push my foot for needle up and needle down, okay? So that's all it's doing. And if I cut, it's actually set at the moment to do three or four little stitches first or a securing stitch, and then it will come up. So let's go back in and sewing foot control right now we're going to set it <laughs> so now instead when i push my foot at the front when i'm sewing i'm going we can do these yet we're going to do a securing stitch so i'll close this down and i'll push the front ah oh. And it's just on a securing stitch. It hasn't gone up, it hasn't hasn't lifted, it hasn't cut or anything. But I can see the value in that because, oh, absolutely. If we were chain sewing and I had another block coming along and with this hover foot function, I was now going to put the next one underneath. That's brilliant because it's secured off for me. Put the next one underneath. Um, I've also got set my securing stitch when I start turned on so I've got to ha I'm going to have one at the end I'm going to have one when I start but I can still chain stitch because I've got the hover on and I can put the next piece underneath so that on its own has a lot more value than what I thought about right, back in here um, back down to our foot control so now what we'll do we'll set it to cut and to raise the foot when we're finished. So we'll close that down and then off we go. So now when I stop, we're still stopping with the needle down. I've got that function set. Let's see what happens. It's going to secure. It's going to cut. And it's going to lift. That is a beautiful thing. So it's doing all those functions for us. Remember as well, you don't have to have that little star securing stitch. There is another one um, that you can use as well that does the little dot, dot, dot. Uh, that one is in here. So when you come back to the securing stitch, if you're doing stretch fabrics, come across to this one and it will do two or three little stitches. This one's probably really good as well if you um, are doing straight lines of quilting and you're getting to the end grid work or something. This might be better if you don't want uh, a little securing stitch and you'd rather just have a few little stitches. So I'll just change that over and set that so that it's doing this one. And we will turn off the cut and we'll just get it to lift. We'll just, we'll just see. We'll just see what it does this time. So securing stitch at the start. Then I'm going to stop and push my foot. Three little stitches and it lifts the foot. And, but my needle is still in because we haven't cut. So that is another great option for you that's just going to secure off and then I could turn the corner, go again, do my little securing stitch, lift the foot, turn the corner. So it's taking it all the way up for me. So there's lots of different combinations that you can actually use it for. Uh, yeah, so I go around, so Deb, I actually go around the top um, and skip, I skip that. I skip the bit. I skip this for winding bobbins. As I said, for years, I did something naughty before, didn't I too? For years, I didn't do it. So 
so I go through this little metal one here and I go around there and come back in or you can just skip it all together I just go straight round up onto that little knob and back around onto my bobbin um, that probably came from a very quick um, try out I'll oh, see I didn't even I didn't even get I didn't get orientation classes when I started on the Benina 7 series machines because I was a friend of Benina I got one beautifully elegantly sent home to me with the book um, and Sandy and Sue at Packenham always said you need to come and have your lesson and it just became just became a bit of a joke but I never actually had one so uh, that's probably my bad but you I've never had a problem just coming to here instead if you if, if you if you feel the need to do that so um I I'm going to do some little demos and come back and show them to you as I said tomorrow morning because I just feel like I I have I've, there's so much I got so confused over the difference between the machines and as I said the main difference between the 720 and the 735 for all intents purposes is the screen if you are not heavily into machine embroidery or decorative stitches and want another 10 stitches here um, I think when you get into machine embroidery it gives you pinpointing but that's all to do with adding on a machine embroidery module so if you have a 720 you have a beautiful machine I would see no reason to change I really wouldn't stick with your 720 it's gorgeous um, my 720 is uh, for sale so if you are interested you need to just give us a buzz on the phone and I can talk to you about it um, and 735s I'm doing on special for the week because I missed it last year and I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be allowed to so we just play it by ear don't we the main thing is if you buy a machine from us you don't lose me it just means I won't be able to sell anymore so I'm still going to be here for you right through all right so uh, I'll go and have a bit of a play and um, I'll pop back in tomorrow morning it will be earlier it's probably going to be about eight nine o'clock so as soon as I've worked out what time, I'll put, pop a little note up and I'll have some things ready to show you then. In the meantime, if you've got... Oh, Anne-Marie, you and me both. <laughs> um, in the meantime, if you think of any questions between now and say about six o'clock tonight, please don't put them on Facebook. Email them to me at info at chandlerscottage.com and then I will be ready for you. What Anne-Marie just said is so true because every time I sit down with with the manual, like, which is so funny. And the same with, I had the 735 with me uh, yesterday um, when I was at Michelle's. And if you weren't standing near me, you'd hear this, no, really? And then the next page, get out of town. That happens because every time I read the manual, I find something different. Um, this page, Robert, uh, Rob found for me, uh, surprisingly enough, not on the Benina Australia website, this was found on, I think it was Mumbai, I think it's Indian, but it's still in English. He found the brochure with the comparisons between a 735, a 770QE Plus and a 790. At, which is what I was trying to work off for you to get it ready. There's one very, very cool thing on the new 770 QE Plus. You have, with your BSR, the basting mode, which is BSR3, which to this day only exists on the queues, on the free motion quilting machines. So that was a fun fact. That was very, very cool. And... The 770 QE Plus comes with a 97D foot. You don't have a 97D foot on a dual feed. It's now out and it, you got to get yourself one. But, yeah, there was just, but I do. I go sit here with the manuals and I just go, what? It's very, very in-depth. And then if you go to machine embroidery, there is no there are absolutely no limits absolutely no limits so get into your manuals have a look email me if there's anything you want me to try out tomorrow or next week or anything anything like that 
Uh, yes, Melissa, ba basting is in the upgrade as well. Yes, so if you've got a 770 and you want to turn it into a 770 plus, the only exception being you're going to stay with your own machine with a smaller screen, then then you then all you're doing the upgrade will take you to that 770 plus um, with everything, and I think that's um, a very va valuable thing to do. What do you mean? Okay, I think yes. Besides besides Judy, um, I'll put some stuff together and I'll pop back in tomorrow morning, uh, and then besides that, you'll see a very Plain Jane event has been scheduled, um, High Tea Tuesday with Emma at two o'clock uh, on Tuesday. All right, take care. And I'll, I'll catch you later on. I might put you back to the, what screen can I put you on so that you can't see me fiddling around with the machine? I might put you, no, that's not gonna work. I'll just leave you there. Have a great day, won't you? Stay cool in Alice Springs, Lisa, and everyone else stay cool. I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye. That one.